So Games Workshop finally revealed the boarding patrol for Aldar. And overall, it is a really good box, especially when you look at it as a value box. But there are a few issues I have with it. One big issue I have with the box is the inclusion of Jane Sarr. Now, there's nothing wrong with her being included when you look at it price-wise, it's a good deal. But I feel like these boxes should be what that force musters generally when boarding, uh, when performing a boarding action or raiding a space hulk. So I don't feel like Jane Sarr really belongs. She could be at a boarding action. More than any other characters in 40k, the Phoenix Lords could be anywhere at any time and it doesn't really affect the fluff. So what would I do instead? Well, I would do what Games Workshop have been teasing uh, and doing nothing with, which is include Prince Uriel of Iandon. The reason they haven't included Prince Uriel is because he is a resin model, formerly metal. So they don't include resin in starter boxes because they want to mislead you into thinking that there's no fine cast left in the hobby and there is. Okay, and also because it's harder to work with than plastic. If you're a new player you might not even know what fine cast is but it exists and it's not the best. Characters like Uriel tend to be fine but you know, I understand them not wanting to include resin in a starter box. The problem is that it's just so thematic. They've been name dropping Uriel a lot lately. I assume he's getting a new body. I don't know. I think maybe this box should have waited until he had a new model and he could have come out in this box. So that's just one change is swap out um, James R with Prince Uriel. But then you have the issue of the Banshees. They make perfect sense in boarding patrol. They're actually really good in the game mode. But what would make more sense is if you then had some Wraith Blades or Wraith Guard, their double sprue. That makes sense because Prince Uriel of Iandin would then be teaming up with his Corsair buddies, which are who he likes to hang out with, and also his people, the Ghost Warriors of Iandin. Whilst Uriel wasn't home, most of his people died and became wraiths. Now he's heir to a kingdom of mostly undead. He likes to spend his time with pirating. So it would be really cool to have a named character who isn't as powerful as a Phoenix Lord or Primarch, but is still quite strong, uh, at a boarding action with his buddies and his people. So I think a stronger theme like this would lead to better sales for the box because it's way more interesting. You have a character who's actually bound to be boarding another ship with his pirates, who will be boarding another ship with his people boarding another ship with them. So it all makes sense. And I think it would make people want the box and also convince some people who don't play Aldar, try the box because it's the most pirate fun you can have in 40K. There are other pirate factions in 40K, but none of them really have that old timey suave flair as the new Corsairs do. So I hear you, you're probably saying they can't put resin fine cast into a starter set, it's just not their style, it's not what they do. I understand that. But you don't need Prince Uriel to have a compelling, fluffy, as thematic starter border patrol box for a Iandin sort of pirate themed box. You just need to have a Spirit Seer. Spirit Seer's have rarely been included in boxes. There was one a long time ago. So, you know, it's a bit different to the Farseer you normally get. And they lead the Ghost Warriors of Iandin into battle whilst teaming up with pirates who are allies with Prince Uriel. You know, it's the Prince of Iandin. So it all makes sense. That's a thematic, cool box. You know, Uriel might be even cooler, but a Spirit Seer is really cool. The thing with the Jane Star and Banshees is that it really reminds me of a box called Blood of the Phoenix. And from what I can remember at the time, people were saying it didn't sell well. As hearsay, I have no hard concrete numbers. Just at the time, I know people were saying that. It had a really, really cool Dark Aldar side with Drizar and some Incubi and Scourges. But the Aldar side, which was, you know, it was... Jane Sar's box after her return and a new figure, a new model. It was kind of lame. It had some banshees, Jane Sar, a Viper, which I've just kind of outdated now, and a Falcon, which looks 
still great, but it's just as old as the Viper, more or less. So, this new box, including Jane's art and some bat sheets, just feels a little bit repetitive from, I think it was late 8th edition, was Blood of the Phoenix. I think that a box of a Spirit Seer and Wave Blade, or Burial and Wave Blade, is way cooler with Corsairs. So in conclusion, I think that these boxes should be more thematic. And it's a missed opportunity here not to have the Corsairs fighting alongside allies that, you know, really have a strong tie to them. It wouldn't have even mattered if they put any other aspect in. It all makes sense that Aspects and Corsairs fight alongside each other when they're boarding. It's just Chainsaw really kind of destroys it and I've tried to show some better character options that they could have included. In positive points, the box is really good value, point for pound. It looks like it's going to be a really great deal, so if that's what you're looking for, I'd go ahead. If you don't have Jane Star already, I'd go ahead. It's really good to buy a box and know you're getting great value. It looks like for this box, it's going to be really good value, but then again, it might come out after the price rise that's happening soon. So, um, keep an eye out for that. Oh, and also... This is the first time we've actually seen official pics of the Corsairs uh, in their basic form in the Troop variant from Games Workshop, so that's nice. It's a bit odd that they're not painted in the same scheme. Kind of makes it feel a bit jumbled together, but you know, it's nice to see them.